stay frosty and head over to EZMutt.com for the cheapest mutt coins on the market. And when I say cheapest, I mean it. We're talking 100K for around 13 bucks. Use code DIRECTOR for 5% off. Yo, what up, brothers? It's the director. Chargers fans, oh my God, is it so good to have football back? I know last night's game wasn't a Chargers game, but oh my God, what a game it was. Tampa Bay versus Dallas. What a way to get the blood flowing for Chargers football Sunday coming up in just a few days. Chargers football is back. The first, the first game preview uh, uh, video of the year in the regular season. So, so excited. Lots to unpack in this game, too. Of course, the Chargers playing against the Washington football team in week one. A lot to unpack here. Are we going to see Ryan Fitz magic or Ryan Fitz tragic? Uh, how is the Chargers' new offensive line going to fare against this dominant defensive line of Washington? And how will the reigning offensive rookie of the year handle himself with a full offseason and the support from his coach? Coaching staff, there's a lot to go over in today's video, man. I am so excited for Chargers football. In the comment section, man, can I get a bolt up? Can I get a bolt up in the comment section for the Chargers in week one versus Washington football team? Let's do this, man. Before we do get started, guys, as a reminder, we have got a giveaway going on right now to celebrate week one of the regular season. And you know what? We're labeling it the giveaway of goats, starting with this signed Antonio Gates jersey. This one's going to be going to one of my lucky subscribers all you got to do to be entered for this jersey is hit up the link in the description follow the instructions there very very simple again this is a thank you for me to you guys for all the support during the off season and a way to get us super excited for the regular season good luck to everybody out there but let's not forget the awesome crew members as well which we're giving away this signed ladanian tomlinson jersey so excited i was able to get my hands on this for you guys signed lt the goat to one of my crew members all you got to do to be entered for this jersey is be a member of my crew that's it we'll be drawing names here in the next couple weeks good luck to everybody man and again thank you so much to everybody for all the support this is a small token from me to you guys for being so awesome thank you guys and with that let's get into this one before we do hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this chargers content the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like sub and bell notification helps me out a lot let's get into this one lights camera action The Chargers at the Washington football team week one game preview. This is going to be a huge statement game, I feel like, guys. Huge statement game for the Chargers. Huge statement game even for the Washington football team. Lots and lots going on as far as narratives in this game. But as we always do in these videos, we're going to start with our injury report, okay? Just kind of you know who to expect to see playing in this game. The kind of injuries and the players that you want to uh, pay attention to in this game as well. So the Chargers, luckily for us, this new offensive line might be complete going into week one where we're really going to need them the most with Brian Bulagi you'll notice here he had the uh, groin injury uh, he had a full practice in on Wednesday and Thursday he's trending to play on uh, Sunday so that is really really good news for the Chargers one big thing of news too that Chargers fans have been going crazy over fantasy players have been going crazy over has been Austin Eckler what's going on with Eck he's still battling what it seems to look like that same hamstring injury from last season he did not practice on Wednesday he did not practice on Thursday however as of this morning I did see something on the sleeper app saying that he did participate in practice today so of course we don't have the Friday practices here we're recording this video a little bit early today uh it's trending again I thought this might be minor Austin Eckler before all the news broke about him not participating in practice he did tweet something pretty positive about being excited about the season so at that moment I kind of realized this may be a minor injury so still something to monitor right hamstring injuries super super tricky those things can linger on forever but as of this morning it seems like he's trending towards playing his availability that game is another question we'll go over that in just a little bit as well Gabe neighbors got a full practice in Trey Marshall defensive back has not been practicing he might miss the game uh, altogether and as for Washington you'll see down here Curtis Samuel Curtis Samuel, big free agent signing. 
by the Washington football team this offseason. Paid somewhere, what, like $35 million bucks for him. He has not been practicing with a groin injury. It looks like he is going to be missing this game. Unfortunate for Washington. Maybe better for us because I do feel like the Chargers defensive backcourt still has something to prove with Michael Davis, uh, Chris Harris Jr., and of course, brand new uh, rookie sensation Asante Samuel Jr., but still not having Curtis Samuel there. Bit of a boost for the Chargers. Unfortunate for him. Again, we do not wish injury upon anybody, even our worst opponents, but at the same time, Curtis Samuel will not be playing this game. Upon uh, further inspection on their website for the Washington football team, it looks exactly the same way. Chargers do have a lot of names to keep an eye on with Curtis Samuel being the lone guy on their injury report as of, I guess, Thursday morning, Thursday night. So there's going to be some players every single week, and this is going to kind of be like the formula, I suppose, you see in these videos of players to look out for on the opposing team, as well as players to look out for on our team. We're kind of trying to create narratives here to look for in this game, okay? So the first thing I do want to go over, which is pretty important, is going to be a big, I would say, boost to the Washington football team. Ryan Fitzpatrick. The most epic beard in the NFL, but maybe one of the more inconsistent quarterbacks in the NFL. Because it really just kind of comes down to like a coin flip, right? What version of Ryan Fitzpatrick are we going to see on Sunday? Ryan Fitz magic or Ryan Fitz tragic? Because if you take a look at maybe let's this pretty important thing down here, right? How did he do in his very first game last season with the Miami Dolphins, right? 191 yards, zero touchdowns, three interceptions. Big, big yikes. This is the reason why he's been traveling around the league so much. He's been really good at times, but also very inconsistent. But what about the next week against Buffalo? 328 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> okay, well, what about the next week? 160 yards, two touchdowns. It really just kind of depends. He could go off in any given game, but at the same time, his consistency isn't there. And if they want to look at, like, maybe the bright side in this matchup, in week one of the last two seasons for Ryan Fitzpatrick, he has not had a very good game. So maybe that's something for the Chargers. He's in a brand new system, brand new team. Maybe that does present struggles for him in week one. It does give the Chargers a slight edge when it comes to how's their quarterback going to perform. When it comes to quarterback comparisons, then uh, uh, the Chargers definitely have the win there with Justin Herbert. Cool? Let's take a look at this next player here. Probably one of their best offensive weapons on their team, Antonio Gibson. Probably up for debate. There's another guy coming up in just a second. Antonio Gibson, one of the best running backs in the league, right? He really just kind of blasts his way onto the scene last season. He's definitely very consistent. Of course, you take a look at his numbers last season. It did take him a little while to get involved in the offense, but when he was, man, he was starting to put up some serious, serious numbers. Also a slight threat out there at receiver as well, but I would say that's more of JD McKissick's role. Now, the reason we're putting Antonio Gibson here as a featured player is because the Chargers historically have not been too good versus the run. Our run defense has not looked great. And by evidence of the preseason, what we saw in the preseason, I'm not quite sure how much we've improved in that area. Now, of course, the Chargers weren't touting their starters out there. So, of course, this week we're going to see Linval Joseph. We're going to see Joey Bosa, who's an underrated run defender as well. We're going to see Linval, or we're going to see uh, Jerry Tillery. We're going to see Kenneth Murray out there, uh, Drew Tranquil. A lot of guys a lot better that should improve our run defense altogether. But at the same time, we have to pay attention to Antonio Gibson. Because if I was the Washington football team, I would be attacking us on the ground as much as possible. Down two scores, still give it to Antonio Gibson. Because I feel like that is the best place to attack if I'm Washington. That's the best way to score points if I'm Washington. The Chargers have a really good flurry of linebackers. Their defensive backs are really good, especially with the return of Derwin James. I'm probably looking at Tonio Gibson this week a lot in order to try and put up points to keep up with the Chargers offensively, okay? Now, the other guy, the other offensive weapon that the Chargers should be paying attention to is Terry McLaurin. I think McLaurin's one of the best talents in the NFL when it comes to his position at wide receiver. The guy's a crisp route runner. He's very, very fast, very efficient. He's going to move the chain. He's going to score on you over top. He's going to be the kind of guy that presents a constant threat to the Chargers defense. Now, of course, Brandon Staley out there. I'm sure he's got a plan on how to uh, lock down Terry McLaurin, how to scheme around defending against Terry McLaurin. But still, McLaurin, 1,118 yards last season, four touchdowns, maybe not the best. Maybe he's not going to be the biggest red zone target that we have to worry about. Terry McLaurin's a really, really good player. And he was playing with a flurry of really bad quarterbacks last season, maybe uh, minus uh, Alex Smith. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick, in combination with Terry McLaurin, could potentially be very, very dangerous. But again, I also do think it, de it uh, depends on which version of Ryan Fitzpatrick we see on Sunday. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at the defensive side for Washington before we get into the full roster here. Montez Sweat. Now, of course, Montez Sweat. 
Uh, he's not the other guy that you guys are thinking of right now, but he's still very, very dangerous in his career. I think logging how many? He's 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 logged like 17 sacks in his career. Only two last season, but still Montez Sweat a constant threat for the Chargers' new offensive line. This is going to be the biggest narrative, and we'll get into this in just a second. The Chargers' new offensive line. How are they going to fare against these very uh, uh, impressive? players in the on the Washington football team's defensive line. This is one of the scariest defensive lines in all of football. Montez Sweat is a part of that, but I'm sure you guys are wondering what my thoughts are on Chase Young. This will be a big one. Chase Young, uh, defensive rookie of the year, logging seven and a half sacks in his rookie season. He's probably going to improve this year, guys. And this is one that really does get me worried when it comes to the Chargers offensive line. This is the biggest test. The biggest player to worry about is Chase Young. And I do think the Chargers offensive line, be it up to the task, is still a pretty freshly constructed offensive line. Corey Lindsley, Rashawn Slater, Matt Filer, all these guys are playing their first NFL game together as a unit in week one versus Washington that does present one of the biggest threats at defensive line. Chase Young's going to be a big one we got to watch out for. Okay? And then the interiors were Jonathan Allen, who they picked up. Also a very, very, very talented defensive lineman. So the Chargers, they will be facing a lot of pressure on Sunday. Justin Herbert, going to have to get the ball out pretty quick. How's the run game going to look? I don't know. We're going to get into that in just a second when we cover the Chargers players to look out for, too. Now to wrap things up, Washington's uh, 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 depth chart here. Who are some additional guys to look out for? Of course, we already looked at Terry McLaurin. What about on the other side for wide receiver? Adam Humphreys. Of course, they don't have Curtis Samuel in this week. What about their offensive line? There are a few places to expose here on the offensive line, right? Right tackle at Sam Cosme. This is a pretty big one, dudes. This is one that I think we should be talking about. <laughs> Sam Cosme, you know, you guys remember me talking about him when we are talking about mock drafts and, and the Chargers and who they should go after as far as uh, the 2021 NFL draft. But Sam Cosme is a rookie, and he could be really good off, off the bat, man. He could be, you know, one of the better, you know, offensive linemen drafted this season. I really wouldn't be surprised. But he's going up against Joey freaking Bosa in week one. That's an area that I hope the Chargers do try to exploit. Start attacking that side of the line. Brandon Sheriff, very good. Chase Ruyer, I don't know how to say his name. Maybe another point of attack right there. Eric Flowers, eh, Charles Leno Jr., he's all right. They have a pretty good offensive line. I would say, though, if I'm Ryan Fitzpatrick, I don't feel too comfortable with Joey Bosa on the other side of me. Not to mention a Kenneth Murray a uh, Uchenna Nwosu, maybe even a Derwin James coming in for a blitz or two. I feel like that offensive line is something that we can exploit. Logan Thomas, another player that we do need to watch out for. Logan Thomas, he's an exceptional tight end. The Chargers do have some really good linebackers out there, though. We will have Derwin James, but we do have to keep an eye on Logan Thomas. He's a good talent out there at tight end. He really is. What about uh, quarterback? We already went over. Running back, we already went over. Defensive line, Deron Payne. We didn't even talk about him. He's great on the defensive line. Uh, linebackers, John Bostic, maybe a little bit. But they are a little bit weak at linebacker, in my opinion, here. Cornerback, another position that we have to watch out for a little bit. Kendall Fuller, exceptional talent. William Jackson, exceptional talent. Landon Collins at safety, exceptional talent. The Chargers might have a little bit of a struggle moving the ball through the air this week, but I wouldn't say something that we can't handle. We do have the wide receiver and receiver talent in general to handle this core of defensive backs. Okay? Let's talk a little bit about the Chargers. The Chargers! How are the Chargers going to do against this honestly very, very good defense? We'll start here with Justin Herbert. These are the guys that I'm going to highlight here. Justin Herbert, one of the best quarterbacks against pressure when facing pressure in 2020 in his rookie season, He's probably going to face a lot of that this week. And that's where we're going to have to dip in the well one more time with Justin Herbert. Please, please extend plays. Please make something happen. Create magic out of thin air to keep plays alive. He's got the weapons out there. Kanan, you know, Jared Cook, Mike Williams, Eckler. Now Josh Palmer, who might actually see some targets this week. Justin Herbert has all the tools to beat Washington this week. And I think we're going to have to see him really pull out all the stops in order to continue putting up points because Washington, they're going to be tough to score on. And if they at any point get the lead, it's the Antonio Gibson show. We're really going to be leaning heavily on Justin Herbert this game to honestly stay ahead of Washington, limit that running attack, and make sure the Chargers can maintain a lead, I would hope, throughout the entire game. Can Justin Herbert do it? 100 freaking percent he can. He can. Now, one of the biggest narratives that I want to talk about is what we saw last night, okay? 
because this actually might mimic a little bit what we saw uh, in our first game in the regular season, Washington, or not Washington, uh, uh, Dallas versus Tampa Bay. You guys notice what they did last night, even with the talent of Ezekiel Elliott at running back, the Dallas Cowboys didn't really run all that much. And when they did, it wasn't very effective. The Dallas Cowboys went out there and put up a lot of points through the air. Dak Prescott having an incredible game because they knew that's the best place, their best opportunity to attack Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay and their defensive back core, not very good. It also suffered a couple injuries during the game. So Dak Prescott and the Cowboys took advantage of that. And the one guy that really did suffer from it last night was Ezekiel Elliott. Because again, Tampa Bay, one of the best defensive lines out there, one of the hardest teams to run on. This, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think the Chargers may be taking a similar approach to this game. If I'm the Chargers, I'm attacking Washington through the air. I don't know if it'll be as easy as attacking Tampa Bay because they did suffer injuries, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think it presents us the best opportunity to score. And that's where we're going to come in with this next guy here. Another highlight player for the Chargers and Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's going to be a very, very, very important part of this team this week. Now, I would expect maybe him playing a lot in the slot, a lot on the outside. He could pretty much go anywhere, right? So he'll be facing off against Kendall Fuller and William Jackson, depending on where he's lined up. I think Keenan Allen is a much better receiver than defensive back or than uh, William Jackson and Kendall Fuller are defensive back. I think he's just a better player. So I think Keenan Allen can win those matchups. I just don't know if he's going to be winning them as consistently if we're playing against a different defensive back core. But still, Keenan Allen, we're really... Keenan Allen and, and Justin Herbert, man, we're going to need these both of these guys to have pretty stellar games on Sunday. And I do think that they're both up to the challenge. I'm not quite sure how Washington plans on stopping these two. They're so dynamic and so dangerous that I think Keenan Allen and Justin Herbert could carry this offense to a victory on Sunday. Keenan Allen's got everything, everything in his toolbox to beat all these defensive backs. I think we're going to see it on Sunday. Now, another important guy to point out here, Austin Eckler. No surprise, right? A lot of people may be a little bit nervous about Austin Eckler. A lot of this depends on his availability. Is he playing? Probably the biggest question. And if he does play, is he going to be on a snap count? How much is he actually going to be playing in this game? And how are they going to utilize him? Now, we're going to go ahead and bypass the questions of, oh my God, is he playing? Is he going to get you know a full snap? Who knows? Who knows? But let's go ahead and assume that he does. How do we use Austin Eckler to beat Washington football team? Well, Austin Eckler, one of the best receiving backs in the NFL, is going to have to be utilized a lot like a receiving back on Sunday. Because again, I can't really see Austin Eckler, you know, battling his way through Deron Payne, you know, Jonathan Allen, Chase Young, Montez Sweat to get three, four plus yards per carry. I just don't see that happening. As good of a running back as Austin Eckler is, that's a really scary defensive line. And just like we were talking with the approach of the uh, Dallas Cowboys, I think we have to take the pretty similar approach with Austin Eckler. But at the same time, Austin Eckler is a much better receiving back than Ezekiel Elliott. So you can still get Austin Eckler very, very involved this week through the air, right? There's a lot of ways to attack this. I would say certainly up the middle, you know, maybe as kind of like your vertical guy, your your uh, 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 safety valve kind of guy, attack those linebackers. That's definitely a position of weakness for Washington. I think Austin Eckler is going to present some mismatch, uh, mismatches, and I do think that we can capitalize on that this week. So if I'm the Chargers, use Austin Eckler to his full potential. Use Austin Eckler the way that he's probably best utilized as far as a receiving back and attack the Washington football team through the air using Eckler as a receiver. Line him up in the slot. You know, line him up outside. Who cares? I think Austin Eckler could definitely contribute this week as a receiver, even though Washington's defensive line is going to limit him as a running back. Okay? Taking a look at the defensive side for the Chargers. Now, we did talk about Joey Bosa versus Samuel Cosme. I'm bringing him up again. Joey Bosa, man. Of course, he's going to see some double teams on Sunday. That might free up other guys on the other side of the line, Chen and Wosu, Kyler Fackrell, Chris Rump. Who knows who they're going to rotate there on the other side. But Joey Bosa, he's going to be presented a pretty good matchup versus Samuel Cosme. So if I'm Brandon Staley, I'm looking at this defense and say, okay, all right, okay, how, how do I get Joey Bosa one-on-one -on -one with Samuel Cosme? You know, do I push everybody over to the, uh, the right side? You know, so all of the uh, the pressure is focused on Samuel Cosme's side. Then they can't really double team Joey Bosa as much. I'm going to take my best defensive player on that line, and I'm going to give him every opportunity to get that one on one mismatch. Because I do think that the Chargers can generate a lot of pressure this week, especially in combination with this next guy and Kenneth Murray. What did we see a lot in this preseason? We saw the linebackers getting after the quarterback a lot, a lot more than we thought. We saw Nick Neiman going down there. We saw uh, Drew Tranquil. We saw Kaiser White. 
We saw a lot of pressure being generated from the linebacker position, but we really didn't see a lot of Kenneth Murray in the preseason. Now, Kenneth Murray, if you remember in college, was a really, really, really good pass rusher as well. Maybe not his best forte, but he was really good at getting after the quarterback when given the opportunity. I think now the Chargers are going to give him the opportunity. And if I am the Chargers on Sunday again, I'm letting Kenneth Murray get after the quarterback as much as possible. Because again, that has repercussions of freeing up Joey Bosa, getting to Ryan Fitzpatrick, which Ryan Fitzpatrick's pretty decent in pressure too. But if you constantly throw these packages at him where Kenneth Murray can get free, Derwin James can get free, uh, Joey Bosa can get free, maybe even Jerry Tillery, which I know Osu. I think the the pressure that we generate on Sunday is going to be very, very important. I do see Kenneth Murray being a big part of that. Now, the last guy I'm going to bring up, probably the biggest name to bring up on defense this season in week one is Derwin James. For the first time in a long time, Chargers fans will be able to see why Derwin James is one of the best safeties in the league, one of the best defensive players in the league. And I think the biggest thing that's going to surprise us on Sunday is is how they use Derwin James. Derwin James is going to cause some pressure, I believe. Derwin James is going to be put into coverages that maybe we don't expect. Derwin James is going to be utilized maybe to the same gravity as a Jalen Ramsey with the Los Angeles Rams defense. If I'm Washington and Derwin James is on the field, I, for one, don't know what to expect. He's going to cause some havoc out there in combination with our other talented defensive players. And Derwin might be the determining factor on whether this Chargers defense can stop Washington on the ground through the air. And if the Chargers can, I would say, most importantly, generate some turnovers. I think Derwin James is up to the challenge. I think Chargers fans and NFL fans have maybe forgotten the name of Derwin James in recent years. And I think he's going to come back and remind the NFL why he's among the best. Okay. So what do we expect in this game as far as big narratives? The last thing that I want to put up here before we move on to kind of like my final predictions. One of the biggest narratives in this game for me at least is the rematch between Rashawn Slater and Chase Young. Of course, the last time these two played together, Rashawn Slater definitely showed why he's worth a first round pick in the NFL. And this will be the first time that we see Chase Young and Rashawn Slater go at it again. And this is a very exciting narrative. Now, I would say maybe... The advantage is on Chase Young a little bit. He's been able to play in the NFL. He saw a lot of success. This is the Rashawn Slater's first time playing football in, what, a couple of seasons? Let alone an NFL game. So Chase Young's going to have the edge. But what if Rashawn Slater goes out there and shuts down Chase Young? That shows just how good of a left tackle the Chargers are rolling out with in 2021 and for the foreseeable future. So keep an eye on that left side of the line. See how Rashawn Slater handles a Chase Young. That'll spell a lot to the rest of the season. Now, finally, the anybody else here on the Chargers that we have to be mentioning? Michael Davis, Chris Harris Jr. Where does Chris Harris Jr. line up is a pretty big one, too. we got to take, uh, keep an eye on Jerry Tiller. How does jo- Linval Joseph play at nose tackle against the run? A lot of things on defense. On offense, a couple of things to look out for. How is Jared Cook going to be utilized on this offense? Mike Williams, in combination, I would say, with maybe a Joshua Palmer. I think Josh Palmer might actually see some targets on Sunday. I'm not quite sure. Who's our wide receiver three as of right now? I would maybe guess, you know, a a Jalen Guyton. But Joshua Palmer, I would say in certain situations, maybe better than a Jalen Guyton at moving the chains, at better, you know, catching, route running, stuff like that. Guyton certainly got the uh, the edge at speed, but I think maybe Josh Palmer makes his first, you know, regular season debut, even if it's just for a couple of plays on Sunday. Kind of exciting, kind of exciting. All right. So finally, what what should we expect in this game? What should Chargers fans, even Washington fans, expect in week one? I'm going to say a lot of defense, okay? Both teams. I would say the combination of the Chargers uh, 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 roster on defense and their brand new defensive scheme behind brand new head coach Brandon Staley, that defense is probably going to shock a lot of us on Sunday. But on the flip side, Washington's already proven to have one of the best defenses in their division, in their conference, and maybe in the league. So this might not be the highest scoring game of the season, but rather a battle of the defenses. And I think whichever team can best that defense, the opposing team's defense, might come away with the win. Very scary defense for Washington, but equally, the Chargers have a lot of potential on defense as well. Whoever can exploit the other one, whether it be through a certain position group or whatever, might be de- might determine the winner. Okay, 
So what's my final prediction for this game? We always end the videos like this. My final prediction for Washington football team versus the Los Angeles Chargers is going to be Chargers 20, Washington football team 16. Low scoring game, low scoring game. On the flip side, this certainly could turn into a shootout depending on what version of Ryan Fitzpatrick we see. I would certainly not be surprised to see the Chargers score upwards of 28 points and Washington scoring upwards of 25, maybe even 28 points as well. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe overtime, first game overtime. But I do certainly think this is going to be a defensive game, low scoring game, defensive focus game. And again, my final score prediction, 20 to 16. Chargers take it. Certainly keeps it close. So in the comment section below, let me know what your guys' predictions are for week one of the Chargers versus Washington football team. It should be a really good one. And also give me your most anticipated player to see, maybe on both sides of the ball. Who are you most excited to see on offense? Let's say me, uh, Justin Herbert, of course, and then on defense, uh, uh, Derwin James, okay? But if you guys have a different answer, let me know in the comment section below. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been The Director. Get hyped for Football Sunday. Make sure to drop in on the live stream on Sunday. We'll be live reacting to the entire game. We usually have a good amount of Chargers fans in here. It'll be a good time. We'll see you next time. As always, bolt up and stay frosty.